All right. All right, so Pythagorean theorem. I bet you know that, huh? What's Pythagorean theorem? Yeah, A squared plus B squared is C squared. I knew you knew it. That is it. Let's write it down. So A squared plus B squared is C squared, the Pythagorean theorem. That's for any right triangle, like, like this. This is a right triangle. It means a triangle that has a 90-degree angle, right angle. That's true for any right triangle. Okay, and um, so they're giving us the numbers there. So let me just plug that in. 16 squared plus 30 squared is C squared. We good to there? That wouldn't work on the arc curve? Yeah, no, good question. It doesn't work, yeah, because that's not really a triangle, because one side's rounded. Yeah, so it does, it's not true for that, yeah. Yeah, Pythagorean theorem is only true for triangle, and it's got to be a 90 degree angle triangle, right triangle. Yeah. All right, so, um, so let's work this thing out. You guys have a calculator, 16 squared, 256, 30 squared be 900, just 30 times 30, 16 times 16. Add those up, what do you get? Um, 1156, like that. All right, now how do, we, um, how do we solve for regular C there? Square rooted. Square rooted. Yeah, that's exactly it. Square rooted. So let's do that. Square rooted, square rooted. That turns it into regular. So that's what you always do when you have C squared, turn it into regular C, or X squared, turn it into regular X. And what is the 11? Is it 34? 34? Thank you. So C is 34. So that means this side of the triangle, C, is 34. Like that, we good? So that's the first question. They have many more for us. They have six more questions for us on this problem. But that's the first one. Find side C with the Pythagorean theorem. We found it. Side C is 34. Now, they're asking me for the Pythagorean theorem. They want, I mean, we did Pythagorean. Now they want us to figure out the values of the six trig functions. See right here? Then find the value of the six trig functions of theta. What do you know about that? Do you know anything about that? Yeah. Sine, cosine, tangent, all that kind of stuff. But it's okay, we're not assuming you do. We're, assume, we're starting from ground floor, assuming you know nothing, but I know many of you have experienced some stuff. What? I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on the sideboard, and that way we can just keep it up and keep looking at it as we go. So um, what's the, what do we use for, um, to remember, what do we use to, so, we, we found this side is uh, 34. We, by Pythagorean, found that's 34. So here we go now. I'm going to try to find the sine of theta. So, according to Sokotoa, Sokotoa, now here's theta, let's, let's go, here's theta's perspective from theta's vantage point. This is the hypotenuse, because that's the longest side, huh? This is the opposite. This is the adjacent. Don't confuse the little a. I did. It's easy to do that. The little a with the capital A. Right? In fact, if the little a is bugging, you just get rid of it now. That's just 16. That's just 30. The opposite and adjacent, the big O, the big A, that's what we're focused on now. So here we go. Sine of theta. How do you figure out? So from his perspective, sine is? 16 over. Yeah, opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite. 16 over hypotenuse, 34. Oh, and we got to reduce that, don't we? But so far, so good. Then we just got to reduce that thing. Divide top and bottom by 2. See how I did that? Opposite over hypotenuse. That's the definition they made up. They just made that up for sine. They needed a ratio of two sides in a triangle for real life things. So they just made that up. They said, we'll call it sine. It'll be one side over the other. It'll be useful for something else. And then let's reduce that. Divide by 2. Top and bottom, that'll be 8 17 Good so far? Always reduce fractions, don't we? We always reduce fractions when we can. Next, let's do the cosine. Cosine theta. So same triangle, same theta. Now it's going to be two other sides. It's always ratios of two sides. Sine, cosine, tangent are ratios of two sides of the triangle. Cosine. Adjacent over hypotenuse, huh? 
adjacent or what's the adjacent? 30 over the hypotenuse, 34. Good. So far, then we got to reduce that fraction. We always reduce fraction. Yeah. Redu divide top and bottom by 2, be 15 seventeenths. This one was opposite over hypotenuse. Good. And then last, tangent. Yeah. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, TOA, opposite over adjacent, 16 over 30. And then we got to reduce that, don't we? Divide top and bottom by 2. It's um, 8 over 15. There we go. Now, there's three more. They said, that's not enough. We want more. They made up three other, because they remember they said six, six trig functions. We got, we got three more to go. What are, do you, do you know? So we want the other three. We got sine, right here we've got sine, cosine, and tangent. Now we want the other three, the flip it, flip it, flip it. So the upside down of sine is cosecant. So I'm just going to flip it, 17 over 8. And I'm going to do the, the flip of cosine, which is secant, which is 17 over 5. And the flip of tangent, which is cotan, which is 15 over 8. Done. Flip it, flip it, flip it. We got all six. We're done with the problem. How are we doing? We doing okay with these new made-up ratios of sides of a triangle things? All right. I'll. So in this problem, we've got the triangle. We write a squared plus b squared equals c squared. <clears throat> and um, which one's the c, by the way? As you look at that, can you tell which one's the c? Yeah, c is always the longest side. The hypotenuse. It's the hypotenuse. It's the side across from the right angle. Does everybody see that okay? Yeah, so it's, and that's the side that the other, see how the other a, and a squared and b squared add up to b, c squared? He's the biggest one. They add up to b, him, squared. So he is 17 squared. 8 squared <laughs> plus b squared is 17 squared. Got it. We're good to there. So you should get 15 in the end. So let's work those out. Use your calculator now. And those 8 squared, 64, b squared... 17 squared, 289, 289, and now how do I solve for, how do you solve this equation, I'm trying to get, trying to find B, how do I, what do I do next, B, B, here's the, you know, the equal sign, B is over here saying I want to be alone, solve for B, how do we, how do we solve for B there? Subtract 64 from both sides. Good, yeah, trying to get, first you get it alone, huh? So first you get rid of that 64, everybody good there? So first get rid of that 64, and I'll get, uh, what do I got? B squared is 2, 2, 5. And then what do you do? And then you root it, right? Whenever we have B squared or X squared or whatever, you just root it. Makes it, makes it a regular, regular letter, and that would be 15. That's what I got up there. The B is 15. We okay with that? So that's the first part. Find the others. That's what we're going to do on these. So now let's fill that in right here. This is now 15, isn't it? 15. Okay. Good. Now, I, that's the first question. Now they're going to ask me for the six trig functions, but they haven't shown me the angle actually they have right here. But let me, let me redraw the picture to make it a little bigger and nicer. So we good to there? So what they want me to do is they want me to find the sine of B. See how they're saying right there? They want the sine of capital B. Now, this time they're not putting a theta. They're not putting that, that O with the slash. That's just a Greek letter, the O with the slash. There. They're not giving that. They're just giving me capital B. Where's that? Well, capital B is up at the top. So, in other words, the angle they're talking about this time lives up here. That's B, isn't it? Up there. So, they, that's their perspective. That's their angle that's their vantage point that they're working with on this problem, okay? So how am I going to do that? Well, let's start with doing the opposite hypotenuse adjacent stuff. So which of the three sides is the hypotenuse? 17. Yeah, it's always best to start with that one. 
This side's the hypotenuse, the longest side, right? Which, which side is the adjacent? Which one's next to next? Remember, it's from B's perspective. That's the angle they're going to ask me to do all the trig functions for. Yeah, the 8 this time is the adjacent, and the 15 is opposite of B, right? If you're at B, from B's vantage point, B's perspective, the 8 is next to you. That's your neighbor. That's adjacent to you, and the 15 is opposite, right? So then when they want, they want, okay, they're saying they want the sine of B. So from B's perspective, they want to know the sine. What's the sine? So Katoa, so Katoa. So what's the sine? Yeah, opposite over hypotenuse, huh? 15 over 17. We good? Opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. And then cosine. They're going to ask for all six again. What's the cosine of B? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be 8 over 17. Then they're going to want tangent from B's perspective. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. 15 over 8, opposite over adjacent. Toa. And then the other three, flip it, flip it, flip it. Right? So as they are on the sideboard there, it's going to be cosecant. That'll be the flipped. And what is it? Uh, secant. And the flip, cotangent, whoop, not a theta, huh, it's B. I forgot what angle we were even doing, B. Whatever, same answer, 8 over 15, and we're done. That's the whole question. Is that making sense? These definitions for ratios of sides, one side over the other. That's all, we're, that's all it means to us right now. That's all they've made up so far. Sine, cosine, tangent, it's different sides over other sides. Does it make a difference if they would have asked sine theta, B? Sign what? Theta. Well, yeah, they did. They'd have to put theta somewhere. There's no theta on this diagram. Yeah. So it all it all matters uh, where they put it. If they put theta up here and said sign theta, it'd be the same three answers because that's the same vantage point. Yeah. So it's wherever they want you to start. And this one they said B up there in the top. So it's like they put the theta up there basically. Is that making sense? We good? So from that angle, there's sign. Sine, cosine, tangent, and those other things. Whatever those are. Which we'll get to some real life reasons in a bit. All right. You okay. So on this one, what they're asking for is the cosine of 60 degrees. So they want the cosine of 60 degrees. So we go, and they're giving me the triangle. All the sides and angles are already there. I don't got to do anything with the triangle. I just got to use it with the Sokotoa stuff. To figure out the cosine of 60 degrees. So go to 60 degrees, make him your angle, make him your vantage point, and then from that vantage point, think about Sokotoa. We're just doing the one cosine? Yeah, and that's all they want. This is this. No, no more seven questions like the last two problems. This is just one question done. So here's the 60. Right? So from his vantage point, first off, who's the hypotenuse? Two. It's, the, it's always the longest side, the side across from the right angle, huh? Which side's next to him, adjacent to him? The one, and then this side's opposite from his vantage point. It would be a different story if we were up at the 30, right? Well, at least the opposite and adjacent would switch. Wouldn't it? Okay, anyway, let's get back to it. So Katoa, it's what you always want to use to help. So cosine, I'm doing cosine. That means adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse. What's, it, what's the adjacent? One. One over the hypotenuse. Two, done. A half, done. That's all I want. Just want to make sure you know what the ratios are. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there, especially tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow we'll go into all those. Yeah, tomorrow we'll get specific about those are very important numbers, aren't they? That's not just any random triangle. That's a super important triangle, yeah. For now, we just go, whatever, just do what the triangle says. Tomorrow we'll specifically remember that triangle, yeah. Good to there. So cosine's half, that's that whole problem. So...
just doing the ratio thing. Cosines adjacent over hypotenuse, they just made it up that way. They could have made it up different. They just made it up because they wanted ratios of sides. For okay, so they want, on this one, they want cosine of pi over 4. Well, what's that? Pi over 4? I don't see pi over 4 anywhere. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, because that's radians, huh? We've got to get over to the degree world because the triangles they're showing me, they're showing me two triangles. I don't even know which one to use. They're showing me two triangles with degrees in them. These all have degrees, don't they? So I need to change that pi over 4 radians to degrees. So remember how to do that? How do we, what's the easiest bridge between the two worlds? 180. Yeah, when you see pi, if you got pi, just pop into 180 because pi is 180, right? Pi is half a circle because 2 pi is all the way around, and 180 is half a circle, because 360 is all the way around. So pi and 180 are both half a circle. They're the same thing. So when you see that pi, we just go, oh, that's 180. So this becomes cosine of 180 over 4. Divide that in your calculator, it'll be 45, won't it? So what they're really asking us for is the cosine of 45 degrees. That's what pi over 4 is. Is everybody seeing that? Pi over 4 is 180 over 4. Because pi is 180. So now, now that I know, oh, okay, so what you guys really want is cosine of 45 degrees. That's what you're really asking. So which triangle am I going to use? Yeah, the first one, right? I don't need this one at all. It's totally irrelevant to the question. All I need is, now, there's actually two 45s. You can use either one. I'll just, I'll just do this one. It's all the same. So 45 degrees there. And then let's do the hypotenuse adjacent opposite thing. Put that on there. So this is the hypotenuse. This is the adjacent. It's next to the 45. That's the opposite. Cosine, so Katoa. So Katoa. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be what? 1 over root 2. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Yeah? But you can't have a root at the bottom. Yes, good. Remember from algebra that we can't leave roots on the bottom? We never leave roots on the bottom? So, that's a good answer. It's just not finished. We've got we to gotta, we gotta get rid of that root somehow on the bottom. How do I get rid of the root on the bottom? Square root, Square root of both sides, right? I got an idea. How about we just erase it? You have to put a square root. Why don't I just erase it? I got rid of the root from the bottom. Now we know that's wrong, but do we really know why? Why is that so wrong? You have to do both to the top and the bottom. Good. Yeah, we, whatever we do, we have to do it to both the top and the bottom. We can't mess with just the bottom. Why not? There's no square or root at the top. Got to do the opposite. But why do we have to do the same thing to the top? So you're right. We got to do the same thing to the top and the bottom. Because otherwise it won't be equal. Good. Otherwise, it won't be the same as it was. So we're changing the look without changing the value. I call it plastic surgery. Removing the wrinkles without changing the value. That's what we're always doing in math. I want to make sure you get that idea. We do that so much in math. Plastic surgery. We give something a different look without changing the value. So that's why you can't just like erase the root from the bottom because that would be a totally different value. You somehow have to get rid of the root on the bottom Using a function. The without function. changing the thing. So how could we do that? How could we get rid of that root without changing the thing. By doing the opposite. We have to multiply top and bottom by the same thing. Don't we? And remember what we do from algebra? What do we multiply top and bottom by? Yeah, the root 2. So if you multiply top and bottom by root 2, look, I'm multiplying the same thing on the top and the bottom, so I'm certainly not changing the value. Does that make sense? And what do you get? What does that become? Well, on the top, 1 times root 2 is just root 2. No big deal there. What's the bottom? What's root 2, root 2 on the bottom? Root 4, which is plane 2. We got rid of the root from the bottom. There's our answer. So the root can be on the top, just not on the bottom. Exactly. Roots are fine on the top. Just We just don't want them on the bottom. On, you guys want to know the real truth? I'm always interested in telling you the real truth. There's actually no problem with having roots on the bottom. 
It's just something that's been decided in the math science world. They don't want roots on the bottom. Actually, a long time ago, before we had handheld calculators, roots on the bottom were hard to calculate with tables and stuff, so that's why they get rid of them. Really, there's no good reason anymore. Roots are fine on the bottom. There's really not any problem. But it's just be kind of become tradition now that we never leave roots on the bottom. It's just a looks thing. It doesn't really matter. But they will make us do it. Is it so, what's that? Yeah, we have to. We have to get rid of the roots on the bottom. Was there a question? Yeah. Can't you just find what on the circle of pi over 4 is and then put just 60 and use this triangle to get your answer? Yeah. On the circle? What circle? The unit circle. Yeah. The one even I put on the thing? You're already using that? Yeah. That'll work. That'll work. Everybody good with what happened there? So I multiplied top and bottom by root 2. 1 times root 2 is root 2. Root 2, root 2 is root 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Plain 2 on the bottom. We got rid of the roof from the bottom. That's the look they want, and it's done. Is that good? All right. So, cosine 45 degrees. I thought there was something else I was going to say, but I'm going to say tangent is sine over cosine. So, it's sine 21, 29 over cosine 20, 29. We good so far? Now that's ugly. We got we got to do some plastic surgery on that thing. We got to do something to change the way that thing looks. It's just going to be a pain like that. So how do we clean that up? Do you guys remember what you do when you got like fractions over fractions to make it? It's called a complex fraction. Want to make it simpler? What do, what do we do? Multiply by, the Multiply by the upside down. The reciprocal exactly. Why? Because dividing is upside down multiplying. You, I'm sure you know that, right? If I was to take ten and divide by two, that'd be five, right? That's the same thing as taking 10 times a half, isn't it? What's half a 10? Same answer. You see how dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by a half, the upside down of 2? So dividing is upside down multiplying, isn't it? So it's also true here. So when we divide by this, that's such a weird-looking, ugly thing. Just flip it up, make it times 29 over 20 upside down multiplying because that's what dividing is dividing is just upside down multiplying so therefore what what do we get when we do that so we get 21 29 times 29 over 20 cross -cancel the and then we can cross cancel the 29s the answer is 21 over 20 for tangent is that good see how we do that so tangent is sine over cosine and when you got a big old fractions over fractions, what we call a complex fraction, you just grab the one on the bottom and flip it upside down. Multiply by the upside down. Like that. Cross cancel. 21 over 20. That's tangent. Now, they want the other ones, don't they? Or do they? Yeah. Yeah, they want all the rest. They want the other three. How do you get the other three? Uh, flip it, flip it, flip it. Just like before. In other words... Okay, they want the upside down. They're asking, see, they're asking for tangent, which we just got. Now they want cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Say, so, all right, you want the other three. So cosecant, if you look up there, cosecant's the upside down of sine. So, so just, yep, yeah, 29 over 21. Just give it a flip. And then next they want secant. That's the upside down of cosine. 29 over 20. And finally, they want cotan, which is what? Upside down of tan. Done. Flip it, flip it, flip it for the other three. How are we doing? Yeah? So that formula is just for tan and theta. What about the cosine and sine? Cosine and sine. Yeah, well, we'll have some other formulas involving them in just a minute. But for now, that's the only one we need. Because they gave me sine and cosine, I, and, they, and they asked me for tangent. So I needed something with tangent. Mm -hmm. so yeah, there's all kinds of relationships, and we'll come up with some more. Get a bunch of them today. Is that making sense on that? So notice that. Notice with me something interesting. If you just have sine and cosine... The other six, other four, <laughs> there's six of them total, huh? The other four all come from sine and cosine, don't they? 
right? If you just have sine and cosine, you just take sine over cosine, and that gives you tangent, and then the other three are flip it, flip it, flip it. So in other words, all of them really come from just sine and cosine. And they do. That's true. All those trig functions really are just different putting together of sine and cosine in some kind of a way. So in other words, all that we're going to study this six weeks in trigonometry, this whole book, it's all really sine and cosine. Everything comes from sine and cosine. So that'll be, they will be our special focus, sine and cosine. Because we can get sine and cosine, we can get all the rest by just doing stuff, right? You get tangent by sine over cosine, and the other three by flip it, flip it, flip it. So all the other ones are just Johnny come lately's, aren't they? It's really all about sine and cosine. Everything else just comes from them. All right. So let's do that on this problem. Are we doing okay? Are you guys getting flooded by formulas yet? You okay? I'm just pouring them on here. The section's bringing them on. So sine squared plus cosine squared is one. They're giving me sine. They're giving me sine. Sine squared of theta. I'm getting lazy. I'm not writing the thetas in there. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is one. So sine squared. So this should be three tenths, but it's squared, huh? Like two power plus cosine squared is one. Good to there so far? Now this is squared. So, so you can square three tenths, right? How do you square the three, square the ten? So three <coughs> times three? Nine. Ten times ten? Hundred. Hundred. Good so far? Squared the 3, 3 times 3, 10 times 10, okay. Now I'm trying to solve for cosine. What do I do to solve for cosine? Yeah, right. I've got to subtract this 9 over 100, don't I? Y'all tracking with me? Because this is an equal sign, right? And cosine wants to be alone. How are we doing? This making good sense or no sense? Hopefully good sense. So what do we got? We coming up here? I'm thinking you're tracking with me pretty well. So cosine squared, cosine is alone now on that side. Cosine squared equals 1 minus 9 over 100. And how do I subtract those? You get the common we got to get a common denominator, right? So, let's do that. What am I going to do with that 1? Make it 1 over 1. And then what? Multiply top and bottom by 100. So this would be cosine squared is 100 over 100 minus 9 over 100. Subtract those. And you get, what's that, A, no, 91. 91 over 100, good so far. Root it, root it. That good? So cosine theta is, now, uh, last step, we're basically there. How do we square root 91 over 100? How do you, hey, do, can the square root is over the entire fraction, which means we're rooting the top and we're rooting the bottom. How do you root the top? Well, you can't. Root 91, you can't do square root of 91. You can try to calculate it's an ugly decimal. It's not a clean one, I mean. We can't do it cleanly. So the root just stays on the top. What about the bottom, though? What's the square root of, uh, I'll just put it right here. What's the uh, square root of 100 on the bottom? That's just nice, clean 10, isn't it? Square root of 100 is 10. So there's no more root on the bottom. That's our answer. We're done. That's all they wanted was cosine. Yeah. So we're done. So everybody see that? Do you see why the root vanished from the bottom? Because we actually did the square root, huh? We did the 100, so that's gone. We can't do the top, so it stays there. So when you do the root on the bottom, it just vanishes. The root of 100 is 10. It's out of there. So, so we're done. Root evenly, you, just leave root there. you just leave it there. Unless they want a decimal answer, then you use your calculator. But on this one, they said... Exact answer, which means no rounded decimals. Yeah. 
What if you're unsure of the format? Remember how to, what if you're like doing some homework and you're not sure, hey, do they want the decimal? Do they want the root? What do they want? So you don't waste a bunch of time. How do you quickly find out what they want? Go to the help thingy and you. Yeah, go to the help button, show me an example. Just go enter, enter, enter down at the bottom. You'll see, oh, they want a fraction with a root. I did that quite a few times. Yeah, it's helpful. I'll speed you up so you don't mess, but lose a bunch of time. We good? We all happy? Okay. So, hmm. Now they're going to have us start doing the properties. What properties? Well, those that we've looked over there. They want us, basically, this, this is just going to be like jogging right now, right? We're not, we're not really trying to accomplish something in the real world, right? You, have, you never pull your car over when you see a jogger, right? Roll down your window and go, hey, buddy, where are you going? You'd be like, I'm jogging. Yeah, I know, but where are you jogging to? You know, they, and I'm just jogging to jog. I'm going to circle. I'm going back home, right? So they're just jogging to get in shape. Well, that's kind of what this is. We're not really doing something right now. They're just having us practice with the properties to get strong with them so that when we get to the real life stuff, we can handle these tools. So think about those properties over there. Don't let the 65 throw you off. The 65 is totally irrelevant. It could be any angle. What is sine of any angle? times cosecant of any angle. Yeah. It's one. Do you see this is just one? Why? Because what is cosecant? The opposite of sine. The upside down of sine. The reciprocal of sine. So in other words, this is sine times, and what's cosecant? One over sine. So what happens? See what you can do there. Yeah, yeah, with in doubt, it's one or zero or <laughs> negative one. Usually they are. Yeah, no, one's a good guess. See if you can find out why. Well, because. Uh, okay, hold on. You, you're too good. I've got to make you wait a second. Let's give everybody a chance. Yeah, she's actually right, though. I will say she's fine. <laughs> See if you can find out why it's one. Again, the angle doesn't matter. Who cares? Ignore the 159. Just, okay. Skip the angle. Look over there at the properties. There, this one's a little more tricky. Couple of steps on this one. So. Give you a second there. Can you say that again? Oh, no. Oh, I didn't get... Oh, what am I doing? I haven't even given you that. You, you guys don't know how to do that. Okay, you subtract tangent. So 1 plus tangent squared of any angle is secant squared of that angle. Yeah. So what that means is when you... These are called, by the way, notice how it says um, use an identity. Use an identity. What's an identity? Two things that are identical value, meaning they're equal. They're equal. So this is an identity. 1 plus tangent squared is equal to secant squared. They have identical value. They are equal. That's called an identity. So what that means is if two things are identical value, they're equal, you could replace one with the other. Huh? They're equal. So you can put one in the place of the other. So this secant squared right here, I don't care what the angle is, whatever. Who cares? Get rid of the angle. The secant squared right there, I can replace that. What is the secant squared the same as? 1 plus tangent squared. And then the other part, minus tangent squared, that just drops on down. Good so far? And then it's easy at that point, huh? These guys cancel, don't they? And it's equal to 1. See, it is one again. They're usually one. Often one. Is that okay? So I replaced this with that because they're identical. This is identical in value, equal to... Secant squared is equal to 1 plus tangent squared. So that secant squared in the front, I could replace with 1 plus tangent squared, and then the minus tangent squared at the back is still there, and the two tangent squareds drop each other out. Tangent squared, positive tangent squared, minus tangent squared, cancel. It's just one. So we're just jogging right now. We're trig, this is trig jogging. We're just practicing using the little properties back and forth to get more and more comfortable with them. Okay, let's try this one. So they want the cosine of 2 pi over 7. Can we just turn it into degrees and then do the whole evolution? You could, you could. I think I'm going to stay in radians. Is that true? Just to give answers on radians. Yeah, I think it'll be easier to stay in radians. But either way, tell whatever you think is easier for you. So, yeah, so first off, so cosine of 2 pi over 7, 
What's, what's the rule now? It's always the original function equals the co-trig function of the original angle, oh no, of 90 minus, huh, of 90 degrees minus original angle. So I've got to say, okay, cosine, write it out if that helps, cosine, write it out longhand instead of abbreviation, cosine, who's his co? Just plain sine, you just cut off the co. Sine, so it's sine of what? Now what angle? Well, 90 minus the original angle, 2 pi over 7, huh? So far so good, we're going to have to do something about that, but two so far, right? Pi over 2. No, like sometimes it's bigger than pi over 2. So do we use pi like 180 or no? Oh, you always use pi over 2. Oh, okay. Even if it's bigger. It, pi over 2 is always true. So uh, sine of 90 minus 2 pi over 7. Now, what, what are we going to do? we gotta, we got to finish up this angle. So let me get it down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, this is sine of. Now, what's 90? Let's change that to radians. You, you heard us saying it. Pi over 2. Is that easy for you to come up with? How do you know? Well, remember what pi is? What's pi? 180. 180 over 2? Half of 180? Yeah, 90, huh? Is that a pretty easy conversion? So whenever you see something like 90, just think pi, which is 180, divided by 2. Go, oh yeah, pi over 2, 180 over 2. That's the same as 90, minus the 2 pi over 7. Now, how can I subtract those two fractions? You have to make common denominator. Common denominator, right? Common denominator. So let's do it. So multiply top and bottom of this one by 7, top and bottom of the other one by 2. Just multiply by the other denominator, basically, right? The first one, top and bottom by 7, another one by 2. That way both bottoms, both denominators, will become 14, won't they? So we will have sine of 7 pi over 14 minus 4 pi over 14. Is that good to there? And that is sine of 3 pi over 14. We're done. How are we doing? This making sense? Questions I can answer? Getting the co thing? So we've been looking at a lot of relationships up there, haven't we? All right, oh, yeah, so tangent 68.4 degrees. So if you have your calculator, tangent, make sure you're in degree mode, though. So do you know where your mode button is? I'm glad to help. So you know where your mode button is? Make sure you're in degree mode and go... Uh, so if you have one of the, I don't know if anybody has this, if you have the big TI, so you go up to the mode button at the top, make sure you're in degree, I am, and tangent 68.4, yeah, I'm getting 2.5, um, four decimal places, so 2.5257, you getting that? 2.5257? For tangent 68.4. Doing okay with that? Is that coming out? So let's. All right, so now change your calculator into radian mode. So, however, you do that, they're different on every calculator. And do cosine, use the pi button. Wherever that is, I can't seem to find it. Oh, there it is. Pi over 12. I'm getting <clears throat> round to four decimal places, 0. 0.9659. What they, what they want on this one is they want the little a, in other words, this side. So now they're giving me a triangle, and they're saying, hey, can you find that little a over there? Can you find that little a over there on the right side? How could I find that little a? Well, you know what you want to think about? 
What have we learned about triangles? The Sokotoa thing. So think about Sokotoa. Think about this angle that's the only angle they're giving me, 35 degrees right there. Right? So think about it from that angle's perspective. And you want this. This is what you're trying to find, the little a. This is what they're asking me for. What's the little a? And use the side you've got, the 330. So 330 is what I know. Now let's put in the opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent. Let's put in all that stuff. Where's the hypotenuse? Right there, yeah. It's across from the right angle. Who's it? Now, it's all from this angle's perspective. That's the angle I'm focused on. From his perspective, the 330 is his adjacent, his neighbor, and the little a is opposite him. Good so far? Not making sense? We good? So now... What trig relationship, sine, cosine, or tangent, so Katoa, which one involves this, O, and that, A, O and A? Tangents, Toa. See how I'm coming up with that? I'm looking at this little triangle, and I'm saying, hey, I've got this angle, so I'm going from his perspective, and, and I want to use the little A, because that's what I'm trying to find. That's what they're asking me for. I want to use the 330. Why don't I want to use H? I don't want to use H because I don't know H. And I don't want two things unknown in the problem. That'll mess me up. I can't have two unknowns. I don't know little a. I don't know h. I'm not going to use h. Little a is what I'm supposed to find. So I'm going to use little a, and I'm going to use the 330. Do you see how I figured out which two sides to use? Want to use something you know, 330, and then what you're trying to find, little a. Those two sides, that's o and a. That's opposite and adjacent. That's tangent, toa. So then I say, OK, so the tangent of the angle, 35 degrees must equal, remember it's O over A, so opposite, which is little a, don't confuse little a with big A, little a is just the name of that side, they could have called it X, it doesn't really matter. And then over the adjacent side, which is 330, so we get that little formula, good so far? There's a little equation involving little a. And I want to solve that for little a. I want to find out what is little a. What's the value on little a? Well, when you've got like a whole number or a whole trig thing equaling a fraction, what you want to do is put that over 1 and go diagonal, diagonal, cross multiply. Have you seen that before? All right, so try that one, Ken. So the whole goal on this one is to find that little c over there. Can you find that little c? So um, we're, we're going to use the 34-degree angle, aren't we? Yep. That's the only angle they're giving me. So here's my angle. That's our vantage point. From his perspective, right, who's opposite, who's adjacent, and who's hypotenuse. And then use the Sokotoa. Jump in and help. So we're trying to find C. Let's, from the 34 degree angle's perspective, this is the adjacent side, the opposite, and then the hypotenuse is C. Good? From the 34's perspective, this is the adjacent, the bottom, and that's the one next to him. The opposite is across where the 24 is. The hypotenuse is always the side across from the right angle. Okay, so which, which trig relationship will involve this and the C? Because actually this time I want the C because that's what they're asking me for. Yeah, that's opposite and hypotenuse. That's sine, right? Right, so Katoa, if you're not sure. So Katoa, which one involves opposite and hypotenuse? Sine. See how we're coming up with that? So then the sine of 34 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse is 24 over the hypotenuse C. Right, this is called C. Good so far. Now, how do I solve that equation for C? Still cross do the cross-multiply thing. Yeah, we're still going to do the cross-multiply thing. So put the sign over 1, go diagonal, diagonal, cross-multiply. This one's going to be one extra step than the last one. I was going to say, because it comes out, if yeah. you don't, it comes out smaller. Are you going to divide back? Or yeah, you're going to have to divide back afterwards, right. 
Everybody see what happens. So I just cross multiply. So C times sine 34 is 1 times 24. Okay. Is that good? Diagonal, diagonal. Cross multiply. And so that's C sine through 1 times 24. That's just 24. And finally, how do you get C alone? Divide. Divide by sine 34. Boom. Hit the buttons on your calculator. 24 divided by. Make sure you're in degree mode. That's a degree angle, right? 34 degrees. I'm getting 42.918999. I don't know how many places I want me to round. You all getting that? That makes better sense. Is that coming up? Yeah, it's got to be longer than the pipe is long inside. Right. Yeah, like, question? Like, the C, like, could it be after sign 34? I mean, it's, like, not really. It's okay. okay. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Good question. Is that good on that? Is that making sense? So we can solve for pieces of triangles. Already we can see a way this is being used. All right, we need a break, huh? Let's... Uh,